Hello, we don't know whether you've come here because of ChatGPT or because you want to know about research on chatbots in general these days. Then let us tell you how we came across the idea of making this video. A while ago I was reading this incredible paper from DeepMind proposing a new chatbot called Sparrow. While we were sitting on this paper and planning the video, here it was, the mighty ChatGPT from OpenAI changed the landscape of the internet. How exactly you can see in plenty other YouTube videos, we focus on the research here. But disappointingly, ChatGPT did not come with an extra paper release. On the other hand, Sparrow from DeepMind has a paper, but they don't let us play with the model. And now that everybody's interest is peaked around chatbots, we really, really want to discuss Sparrow, especially since it was trained very much like ChatGPT, but with even more objectives because it can follow explicit rules and can make Google searches to provide evidence for its answers. Since ChatGPT did not do such a good job at telling me what to say to you in this video, Miss Coffee Bean will give her best shot at explaining ChatGPT from OpenAI and Sparrow from DeepMind and make a comparison. But first, let's thank Cohere for sponsoring today's video. Since you're watching this video, we assume you already heard about the incredible advancements of natural language processing. Maybe you thought of including the latest and greatest large language models into your applications. Well, then Cohere is the right thing for you. It lets you use extremely capable language models to let them classify text for you or let them generate documents. Does this sound complicated? Fear not, because it is not at all complicated. Cohere's specialty is to take the finest transformer-based models like GPT and BERT and let them do the heavy work for you under the hood. And all you need to do is to write these few lines of code to start generating text. You don't even need machine learning skills to use Cohere. Just install it with pip install Cohere and you are ready to go in Python. So what are you waiting for? Sign up to Cohere and start exploring it. They have a very generous free premium developer tier, so no credits are needed. Users bear no costs until they go to production. You can sign up with this link also posted in the video description below. Now back to our chatbots. Let's get a thing out of the way. How do chatbots like ChatGPT work? They are based on language models, which is just a fancy neural network that can do fancy autocomplete. Language models predict next probable words given previous words. Even before the user starts conversing with chatbots like Sparrow or ChatGPT, they already have an input, the so-called prompt, which is basically a description of the conversational persona given by the programmers. This prompt increases the probability that the next words the language model will spit out are in line with this persona. So if here in this prompt we have the word helpful, then most likely the model will predict next words that match this description and will not start using swear words as easily. Okay, so how does this language model converse? After this input prompt, which is hidden from you in ChatGPT's interface, it is your turn to ask it a question. Then given your question and the persona description, it delivers an answer. Then you say something again, it reads the prompt and your first question, its answer, your second question, and based on this, it continues to say likely words that come after this whole history. And this goes on and on with each iteration from your side and the model's response, you make the model's input longer and longer. The magic thing about these large language models behind ChatGPT is that they are super fancy autocompletes that can pick up patterns. For instance, if you prompt them with descriptions and examples that tell them about an HTML alternative called HBML, they start to pick up the pattern and the most likely words following your examples are the correct solution to the things you just entered, with high probability. 
This is called in-context few-shot learning. In context, because it is not like the model's parameter updates through learning in the classical sense of weight optimization, it is just that the input already has a pattern in it that elicits correct answers from the model, making it seem like it has learned something. That the model itself does not update becomes clear when we see that this whole history of conversation and all things the model learned from you is gone when you or somebody else opens another conversation with the chatbot and the input is now gone and the model works just with the prompt and not with the things you had previously conversed with it or other people did. In this new conversation, the history starts anew, so it's not like the model learns anything from past sessions of conversations or from other users. Now, maybe we want to know how ChatGPT from OpenAI works. ChatGPT itself does not have a paper explaining it, but it has a blog post. Here we find out that it is a sibling of InstructGPT and it was trained similarly to InstructGPT, which has a paper from which we find out that it works very much like Sparrow from DeepMind. And in this video we would rather present the Sparrow paper since it came later and is a bit more comprehensive and you'll see why. At the end of the video, we will highlight the differences between Sparrow and InstructGPT, so therefore as much as we know about ChatGPT so far. So Sparrow is DeepMind's version for a chatbot. Interestingly, the Sparrow paper never uses the word chatbot, and maybe it has something to do with the fact that for a long while it was out of fashion to use the term since research in chatbots was hyped, starting with Eliza in the 1960s, and it failed to deliver onto its promises. So research building chatbots such as DeepMind here with Sparrow preferred to use another term like dialogue agent or terms like dialogue system or conversational AI. It is relieving to see that OpenAI makes the word chatbot fashionable again by naming their model ChatGPT and look, they even use the word chatbot in their blog post once. We think it is a pity DeepMind did not release Sparrow or at least gave access to users to interact with the model like OpenAI does with ChatGPT, especially since we find the Sparrow method, its motivation and paper really cool. Why did this team of researchers think about building Sparrow in the first place? Their motivation was that language models when prompted to behave like chatbots tend to say inappropriate things, including sexist or racist statements, and they tend to be opinionated. The language model just doing its thing of predicting next probable words to what was just being said does not have the means of knowing whether it is offending somebody. So the idea with Sparrow is, what if we could define a set of rules and fine-tune the language model to follow the rules? While this sounds easy, it is quite hard to convince a language model to follow rules, and the author's solution here involves human feedback at a smaller scale about the model following or breaking rules. Then training classifiers that will mimic human feedback at a larger scale, and then fine-tuning the language model with reinforcement learning to follow the feedback of the classifiers. And since the classifiers reflect the human feedback, and the human feedback tells us something about the model following the rules or not, we should have convinced the language model to follow rules in the end. <laughs> this seems complicated, so how to do this more exactly? The authors built Sparrow by fine-tuning Chinchilla, their 70 billion parameter language model, that already has great capabilities at producing high-quality text and solving natural language understanding tasks. To make it a chatbot or a dialogue agent, the authors use this prompt to convince it to take the conversational persona of a, we cite, highly knowledgeable and intelligent AI assistant. They give it its name, Sparrow, in the prompt, and describe what the user should expect from the model and also have an example conversation. Now, following this prompt, the user can type in a question or another conversation starter and Chinchilla will take in the prompt, the user's question and then give the answer. 
But Sparrow can do something more than just converse, which is provide evidence for the answers it gives. To achieve this, the authors do a specific update to Sparrow's prompt. We have two more participants in the conversation, namely the search query and the search results. The search query is basically also a Sparrow persona, where the language model generates a search query based on what was said in the conversation so far. And the search results is basically a call to Google search and provides a short preview and link to the result. So now this whole thing containing the description for Sparrow, example user inputs and search queries and search results are the prompt which Sparrow always has as input and generates answers with. Now we come to the part where the authors make Sparrow also follow rules. First, the authors come up with 23 rules. The rules roughly cover three categories for making Sparrow more helpful, correct and harmless. Of course, this list is not exhaustive, as the authors themselves admit. One could and should come up with more rules and apply the whole strategy we are describing here on the additional rules. Now, to make Sparrow follow these rules, the authors let it talk without it knowing about these rules. And human annotate how well it does on different aspects. They tell which rules are violated and whether it should search the internet to provide evidence. And in case it provided evidence, whether it was good. Humans are also given an adversarial setting where they try their best to break the model and make it violate the rules. Here, in a sense, the humans are encouraged to get the worst from the model. And this is valuable training data for fine-tuning sparrows since the new iteration of the model should avoid the worst of the last iteration. So this is the human annotation stage where humans give feedback on how sparrow is performing. And since Sparrow at this stage is just a chinchilla language model prompted for conversation, it should not do that good. Now the authors take the human-generated annotations to train a neural network to classify how probable it is for a human to like the answer that Sparrow produced. They train another classifier to say whether a response is likely to break a rule or not. These classifiers are super useful because now the authors can train Sparrow with them. For each answer Sparrow produces during training, a classifier can extremely quickly estimate a human feedback for it. Asking humans during training for every example to give feedback would make training last forever, so the authors use these classifiers instead. So the authors froze the last 64 layers of chinchilla and fine-tuned the last 16 layers with reinforcement learning, taking the output scores of the classifiers, enforcing the model to have low scores on rule violation and high scores for the estimate of a human to appreciate the answer. For training, the authors used a dataset consisting of questions and answers from the explain me like I'm five dataset also conversations from the human annotators and the generations of Sparrow's last iteration, because why not apply this strategy in more stages until Sparrow becomes better and better at following rules and searching the internet to provide evidence. During inference with the last iteration of Sparrow to get the best answer from the model, the authors let Sparrow generate multiple answers and give to the user the answer that ranks best given the outputs of the classifiers. Okay, how much better did Chinchilla get after all this heavy lifting involving human annotation and reinforcement learning to become Sparrow? Well, humans say that Chinchilla delivers answers that are plausible 61% of the time, while Sparrow's answers are plausible and supported by evidence 78% of the time. This looks good. Chinchilla breaks rules 20% of the time, while Sparrow only 8% of the time. But what I love about this Sparrow paper is the extensive evaluation of the models. Surprisingly, fine-tuning Chinchilla to become Sparrow reinforced some of the language model's stereotypes. Just to give you one example, the scores of Sparrow are worse on the Vinogender dataset measuring bias towards gender than for the baseline Chinchilla model. Now, we know about Sparrow. Let's highlight its differences to ChatGPT. First, Sparrow was prompted and trained to deliver evidence for its answers when needed by searching the internet and providing the user with the link. ChatGPT cannot do that. 
ChatGPT is also a prompted language model based on GPT 3.5. It was also trained through fine tuning on conversations provided by humans. So humans rank the language model's responses and this data is used to train a classifier modeling how a human would rank ChatGPT's answer, much like with Sparrow. And fine-tuning with reinforcement learning uses this information provided by the model for estimating a human in the loop and therefore trains to provide better answers. But ChatGPT misses one very interesting component that Sparrow has. Sparrow also had training from a classifier trained on human annotation, telling it how well it can follow a set of rules. So in a sense, ChatGPT is like Sparrow, but without the capability of searching for evidence and without rule following, which makes it a bit underwhelming. Hey, Miss Coffee Bean, maybe Sparrow's conception was more far-sighted than ChatGPT's, but at least we have access to ChatGPT and can play with it. Regarding Sparrow, we can only look at the paper and dream to play with the model. What a world! We have models without detailed papers and we have detailed papers without model releases. Should we even start dreaming about model weights and code releases? <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our overview about chatbots these days and we hope to see you next time. Okay, bye. Thank you.